Who does Jerusalem belong to? Jewish, Christians, or Muslims? Why there is wars always around Jerusalem? And where are the Gentiles in the picture? Welcome to Jerusalem, to the Shuk, to the old city, right. So as you can see, here is Sarah's skirt. This one is Miriam's skirt. So this is the central area for tourists, yes. as you can see. You know, it's so interesting that we are walking here and you see so many symbols of other religious, you mm. know, like not one religion. <laughs> yeah. Even the people, right? It's all different types of people too. Yeah. It's like, who does Jerusalem belong to? Mm. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. These ancient looking stones, are they from back, back in David's time? Actually, if we will go a little bit more in front, you would see the original stones. Really? Yeah. Wow. Let's go see it. Let's go. It's so interesting how like stuff are combined here. Yeah. You can see Jesus, Last Supper, you can see Israel, you can see visit Palestine, and all of that is here. And it's kind of all connected, all working. Like yeah. that's, that's what Jerusalem is all about. It's about coming together and being together and living together. Yeah. Love that. So nice. So you can see right here, the different sizes of the stones itself. Mm -hmm. But it's even more crazy when you think that, guys, we're standing on original stones of the times of Jesus. Yeah. And you said something about so many layers that yeah. Jerusalem has. Actually, Jerusalem has seven layers wow. because it's been rebuilt and destroy destroyed mm. again for eight times. And then it has seven layers of like history. Wow. So, so it, even it, that, it's not the oldest. Mm, they have even old, more oldest stuff here in Jerusalem. Like Crazy. underground? Yes. It just shows you how much wow. history, that every time when you dig, you will find more more evidence of, you know, that there was so many things. Is it that why I'm like here, I'm like the beginning of the first century? Here I like now dimes. Yeah. <laughs> beginning, yeah. Like, now to dimes. the future. History in the back, history in <laughs> back. That's right, that's right. And even more crazy when you think about it, you know, he probably, Jesus was probably walking here on yeah. these stones. Yeah. And so many people were walking right here and we we're walking with our shoes. I can take my shoes. Yeah, maybe we should try it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take our shoes out. Uh, no, please save me from that. So although Jerusalem have lots of layers and right now we saw mm -hmm. one of the oldest layers, mm -hmm. but still it's going back to the past that shows something interesting that shows who Jerusalem belonged to. Mm. Okay, to who? Well, that you'll find in the next chapter. Who does Jerusalem belong to? Jews, Christians, Muslims? The question is always there. And let's go back to the history and let's put in proof once and for all what is really the right story here. Because time after time we see that people are trying to twist the history, but when you're standing here, you should be faithful for the truth. And everything starts with Abraham. When Abraham did a covenant with God, this place was really a significant place when he took his son, Isaac, and God told him, take him to the mountain and sacrifice him for me. And it was a really hard situation. I think you as a father, you've been waiting for years and years to have a son, and suddenly in one moment, God tells you that take and sacrifice your beloved one. And he did it. He took him all the way here on this mountain behind me. And he was about to sacrifice him. The angel came and stopped him in the way. And that moment, everything changed. God saw the faithfulness of Abraham. And that from this faithfulness till this day, we are in a, in a historical covenant. Jewish people are 
descendants of Abraham. And when you think about Jerusalem, the name Jerusalem is mentioned in the Bible 669 times. And when you see that uh, words, that scriptures, numbers are repeating, it means it's important. So you see that Jerusalem is an important city to God, that God is really admiring, that God has a role for Jerusalem. And when we go back to King David, King David was a really significant king for, for all Jewish people. He was not only that he was the most successful one, that he took over the big enemy that Israel could not face to, and he was standing up and pulling his faith and trust in God as Abraham did. And right here when he conquered, when he won, and when he built it and rebuilt back Jerusalem to his glory, it was a really important place. And his city, there's still ruins of his city right on the left. And it's just amazing to see that there is so much evidence that Time after time, year after year, we're digging and finding more and more evidence of the Jewish inheritance here in the land. And if you look even down here, right behind us, we, there's a big graveyard, but in, on the bottom of the graveyard, archaeologists have found thousands of graves of Jewish people. It means this land belongs to the Jewish people and there is no doubt about it. It's us and it will be always Jewish. In ancient times when the tabernacle was founded, years later there was no place to keep it and to have it. And then King Solomon, he was uh, receiving from God to build a temple. And when he built it a massive, and there's many historical evidence that are speaking that it, it was so significant, it was so huge, it was so big, it was one of the most beautiful uh, structures of in all days, that even in these days it would be just magnificent. And so many different kings were building and were staying here in Jerusalem. So much blood was spread over these walls of Jerusalem. There is a reason why Jerusalem is so important. You know guys, it's so weird that right now we're sitting in a restaurant in Jerusalem eating the best food in the world, no question about that, and there is a war. Yeah, like just here. 70 wow. kilometers away. There is a war on exactly this chair you're sitting in, like on this place, you know, it's so funny and it's so quiet here, like for a war. I think it's, it's sometimes it's quite hard to Imagine that, yeah. that even in time of war, you can sit down quietly, eat your food. Life is normal yeah. when only a few miles away, it's a There's chaos. A yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time when I went out from Gaza, uh, I, I went to Tel Aviv, I think, it was with you. And then I saw a line to the restaurant. I'm like, what? A line to the restaurant? Where do you live, guys? Are you like, on earth like there is i was fighting there i was yeah you know like not playing but kind of putting my life yeah. on the edge for you and you have a line mm -hmm. and then it hits me that that's why we are there like that's why we're fighting and that's that's yeah. the most interesting part so like in israel you really feel safe it yeah is. you really feel good yeah. you can have a good kartoshka a good <laughs> potato how do you feel about that you know as someone that came from outside yeah it's really crazy because the media portrays a lot. Yeah, yeah. And people would call me crazy for coming here during wartime. And I understand that in a way, but I love that I was able to come, experience it for myself. And it was crazy to grasp that we're able to have peace and stillness and quiet in the city while it was actually, it was crazy, like while just 40 minutes, an hour down, there's a war going on. Yeah. And people don't see that in the media. No. Nope. They don't see that. Unfortunately. Yeah. But you know, it's like, it was writing in the Bible that the war will come and all of that, but we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah. And proclaiming peace over Jerusalem. So. That's right. Here's your peace, probably. Yeah. There is a peace. I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a deep, deep understanding and revelation that you will never understand till you come here yeah I think only when you come here you really realize that like much more I mean yeah because I cannot explain you like in words or show you videos when you yeah. come here I mean like I don't think anywhere in the world 
where there is a serious war, life is normal. Like, we're so used to it that it's so obvious and it's so okay. It's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. It is. Yeah, but... Awesome. Thank you. And it's actually... I lost the point because he came with the hummus. <laughs> and yeah, like, for example, we had uh, a bit more than a week ago a special event mm. and I had friends coming from the States that they've been scared to come to Israel because their parents saw, and like, no, don't come, don't come. Yeah. Yeah. And they've been here and they said, wow, like that's the most peaceful place, that's the most wonderful place. Yeah. So lots of times when you see stuff in the media or stuff, I don't know, which from our friends, it says nothing about the place. It says nothing about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Although lots of people want to occupy Jerusalem or like win or rule over Jerusalem. Yeah. But at the end, again, Jerusalem will be belong to God, not to the people. I Amen. Mean, it's been occupied a few times, but it never... There were wars for a long time. Exactly. So it means that, I think in the end, God is in control. And everything is by His word, and everything is by what He promised. Yeah, yeah, Cheers. for sure. Today, the eyes of the world are on Jerusalem. In the day of a war between Israel and Gaza, there is so many people all over the world that comes and stands against Israel. At the beginning of the war, we saw how, how much support and understanding for the Jewish people, but with the time, we saw the difference and the hatreds that started to come over Israel. And there's all this sentence that they say, all eyes on Rafa, all eyes on the kids of Gaza. So we're witnessing a big wave of hate, and people are just becoming anti semitic but it's a spiritual side as well, because when God chose the people of Israel to be His own people, it was a calling and there was a sacrifice for that. And that's why it's so important to always pray for the peace of Jerusalem, because the peace of Jerusalem is affecting the whole world, affecting the whole area. What comes, what is happening here. Imagine yourself, right now in the world, there is genocide of so many people. So many Muslims are suffering and getting killed, but no one talks about it. But when it comes to Israel, when it comes to Jerusalem, for some reason, the whole world is getting nuts and get in just, we see hate. Everything that happens is supposed to happen. Everything has been written. And that's why there is a hope. Wow, guys, it feels so good to be here in Jerusalem. It is so beautiful, such a sunny day. I love it. By the way, Danin, how was it for you as a non-Jew to come to Jerusalem for the first time? Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, you read about it in the Bible. It's where Jesus has walked. And I understand that it's a significant place here for you guys as Jews, but also having the revelation that this is also where our Jesus walked and where he talked and preached and where his disciples were. And it truly is something that is also very touching. And I hope to experience something like you guys do, the, the feeling, the revelation of the Messiah being here, Jesus being here, walking here. What do you guys think for who this city most important for the Jews or for the Gentiles, the Christian? That's a good um, question. I think it's important for everybody. Like there's three religions here. Yeah. Like you have the Muslims here, the Christians and the Jews. And like every religion have the special place for their religion. You know, That's you right. get it? It's good. Oh, yeah. thank like you. an area of places. I mean, yeah. the quarters, you know, it's already kind of uh, spread to different quarters quarters and you can feel the vibes everywhere and it's yeah. it's so different but at the same time for everyone it's so special so yeah. it's not like if we talk historical of course it belongs to, to the Jewish people it is Jewish uh, city yeah. but once again there is so much in it yeah. like it's uh, such a deeper uh, understanding maybe or kind of you know why it's so special yeah. in your eyes kind of you know yeah yeah. I think it's special for us, like as a believers, that like that's the place where Jesus will like come back. Mm. Mm. You good. know, so like it's like for us, yeah, mm. and for the Jews, actually they're waiting for the Messiah as well. Yeah. So and uh, 
the Muslims, I don't know. <laughs> well, we're always <laughs> joking about that, like the Jews are believing for the first coming of the Messiah, the yeah. Christian says we're, we're waiting for the second, second. coming. It's funny. For me, it's uh, always wild, the city, because it shows just God's mercy. Mm -hmm. He said uh, he chose the Jewish nation, right? He chose the Jewish people. But then he said, hey, I want everybody to be included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to be called the child yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. And then he sent his Messiah. And by that, by this grace, by, this, by his mercy, we are able to stand on this city. Yeah. Jews, Arabs, Christians, Buddhists, other nations. It's important for everyone. Why? Because it's important for God. Yeah. And then you can see like how we all connected. Yeah. And I don't think most of the people even understand how much is like connected to God. Yeah. 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 That's exactly that's exactly how it feels. That's exactly the significance of being here today. Is that I'm able to come connect with you guys and it's all one common thing. It's God. Yeah. All God. He's the center and still it's this place is able to speak somehow to each heart yeah. and I, I think that's one of the reasons why so much blood was spread over this place yeah. i mean if you think about it so many empires were here yeah. so many people tried you know to take it and it, it was belonged to, to different empires as well so no it's like this place is significant and, and i think that if we talk about the spiritual side as well you know the enemy hate Jerusalem because of that as well. But imagine what the stones, if they will be able to talk, what they will say for the future. Yeah. Yeah. They say, hey guys, calm down. Calm down yeah. There have been a lot of people that try to occupy the city or control over the city, but it's not working. Yeah. Because it's not about you controlling, it's about what God control, right? Yeah. So I think for the future, and that's what God can, sh can literally he show us now in Jerusalem. That. Interesting, but yeah, but interesting what the Bible says about the future for Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, there's so many scriptures. I mean, every time we talk about Jerusalem, you know, we talk about kind of the end of, of everything. Yeah. So, you know, like... Yeah, that's interesting. We need to, to check it. Yeah, we should. So, yes, there's a lot of history. But there's a future as well for this city. There is a destiny, there is a prophecy, there is so much promises of God for, for the city of Jerusalem. One day we know that all nations will rise up and come against Jerusalem, will come against the living God. It will all will surround Jerusalem and will try to take it down. Even more, there is scriptures that saying that God will raise Jerusalem as a cup of drunkenness and right there, when the nation will try to go against Israel, God has a different plan for this place. Everything will be ended here. Everything will be finished here. That's why this city, this super unique, super fresh, modern, new and old is so important for everyone. Everyone wants to be here, especially in this time. Even when nations will come against Israel, there will be still Gentiles that will stand and support Israel because we know that the scripture says that will be a day when they will come to celebrate different feasts of Jerusalem. And it's just showing you that even when the future looks bad and when in the future the enemies is around you, you as a believers, as a Christians, you are standing with Israel. It is important. It is important to understand their role, that this land belongs to the Jewish people, the chosen people by God. God chose them from all other nations to be His beloved ones. And when you come to the land, you're joining this covenant because when Jesus came, everything has changed. Jesus was the solution. Jesus was the way to God that not only the Jewish people that are belong to Him, that you as well as Gentiles, as a believers, as a Christians that support Israel becomes and become one. Everything involves around Jerusalem today. It began here and it will end right here. Jesus will come back. As He rose from here, He will return back to the same location where we're standing now. And He will come as a ruler and He will be the salvation to the world and the salvation, the most important, for Israel. And the kingdom of the thousand year will fall down from the heaven, come here to the new Jerusalem, and we all will be here. So one day, my friends, we're all going to be here together to worship the King of Kings. And Jerusalem is the center of human history. Actually, if you want to know what the time, the prophetic time, you can look on Israel, on Jerusalem, and then you will understand what time we're living at. Day of Jerusalem. 
Not every Israeli knows about that day, but it's actually a really important day. In 1967, in the Six Day War, Israel, after thousands of years, came back to their capital. When Jerusalem was divided, it was not only for the Jewish people, the Jordanians were ruling here and different people, but 67, it all changed. And that day, it's a celebration day when people every year coming up to Jerusalem, coming with flags, dancing and celebrating that the capital is ours after thousands of years of waiting to come and worship the King of Kings here in Jerusalem. So that day you would see a lot of kids, a lot of grown-ups, old people, young people dancing, crying and of course singing to God of joy that one day Messiah will come back here. There will always be jealousy for Jerusalem. Jerusalem does not belong to anyone. It belongs to God alone. Salvation began here by the cross, and the full redemption is yet to come by His coming. Everything involves around Jerusalem today. It all began here, and it will all end here.